Three weeks ago, the Secretary General of OPEC made an unusual public statement. He accused major financial media outlets of fundamentally misrepresenting the state of global oil markets, not misunderstanding the data, not getting the nuances wrong, misrepresenting it. Which was issued, I believe, on the 12th of November last week, uh, specifically regarding the messages and a narrative that was being created out of reading some of our numbers. For example, things related to the market being in a surplus next year, 2026, according, and the report said according to OPEC, or OPEC said, which is totally inaccurate and totally untrue. Our report does not say that at all. And we thought it was imp an imperative on us to, to actually come out and clarify this to everybody and uh, make it clear that you know, we hope that the way people read our reports, uh, it's a very basic report, nothing complex about it. It's very transparent. Now, when the head of OPEC breaks with diplomatic protocol to make that kind of accusation, it's worth paying attention. Because if the consensus narrative about oil market is wrong, and I'm going to show you evidence that suggests it may be, we could be witnessing the formation of something economists call a reverse bubble. My name is Sean Pruitt, and over the next 20 minutes, I want to walk you through a structural problem developing in energy markets. This isn't about predicting prices. It's about understanding a mechanism, a mechanism where widespread pessimism creates underinvestment, underinvestment creates supply constraints, and supply constraints can lead to sudden violent price dislocations. We've seen this pattern before in 1973, in 2008, and right now, every structural indicator that precedes these events is present in the oil markets. Let me show you what I mean. Here's what every analyst, every bank, every media outlet is saying right now. Oil glut, peak demand, oversupply crisis, oil is dead, Goldman Sachs says surplus, JP Morgan says surplus, the IEA says surplus. But here's what doesn't make sense. Physical inventories in deficit since mid-2021. That's nearly four and a half years of drawdowns. Our Berman, petroleum geologist with 40 years experience, calls the glut narrative some of the worst analysts I've seen in years. Pure groupthink. OPEC spare capacity, 4 million barrels per day total. Sounds like a lot, but here's the problem. It's concentrated in three countries. Everyone else is maxed out. The amount Saudi Arabia can actually deploy rapidly, maybe 600,000 to a million barrels per day. The market is one crisis away from a spike. And here's something that should concern you. November 21st, 2025, today is the deadline for companies to wind down dealings with Russia's two largest oil producers, Rosneft and Luke Oil. New U.S. Treasury sanctions. Ukrainian drone strikes have already cut Russia's refining capacity by 20%. Their oil exports dropped 26% in September. This is half of Russia's total oil exports suddenly constrained. And Russia isn't the only flashpoint. In June, Israel struck over 100 Iranian targets. Taiwan shut down its last nuclear plant in May and now imports 98% of its energy, mostly through sea lanes that China could contest. One disruption, one escalation, and that thin 4 million barrel cushion disappears. Now here's the big one. U.S. shell production, the only reason oil stayed cheap for the last decade, just peaked. The EIA forecast American production will decline from 13.5 million barrels per day to 13.3 million by the end of 2026. First sustained decline since the Shell Revolution began. Rigs at 442, lowest since November of 2021. Best spots already drilled, moving to poorer, costlier location. And here's what almost nobody knows. There's one basin where wells are declining 75% in year one. Not 35%, 75%. And the technology making it worse might surprise you. I'll explain in a few minutes. But first, you need to understand why this matters. You know what a normal bubble looks like? Everyone gets excited. Prices rise. Investors pile in. Companies overbuild. 
Supply floods the market. Prices crash. Dot com, housing, same pattern. A reverse bubble is the exact opposite. Everyone becomes so pessimistic that nobody invests. Capital abandons the industry. The narrative becomes, this asset is dead. And here's the terrifying part. Reverse bubbles don't deflate slowly like regular bubbles. They explode. Let me show you what's happening with investment. Oil investment more than halved between 2014 and 2021. Current investment, 420 to 580 billion annually. Now the requirement to maintain supply, 640 to 650 billion. We are short 60 to 80 billion every single year. But here's the real problem. Since 2019, nearly 90% of upstream investment has been spent just offsetting decline. Not growing supply, just standing still. Now let me give you an analogy. Imagine you're running on a treadmill, but every month someone increases the speed by 5%. At some point, you can't run fast enough to stay in place. That's the oil industry right now. The treadmill, natural decline, is speeding up and producers are getting tired. Here's that number I mentioned earlier. Delaware Basin Wells, part of the Permian, declined 75% in the first year. Now, here's the part most analysts miss. Recent technology improvements, simultaneous fracturing, extended reach laterals, AI-optimized fracking have increased productivity Productivity 10 to, 30, 10 to 30%. Sounds great, right? But here's a hidden cost. These techniques extract oil faster by using higher propent, loading, and larger fluid volumes. They are essentially sucking the reservoir dry at an accelerated rate. Think of it like this. You can drink your milkshake faster with a wider straw, but the milkshake runs out sooner. And it gets worse. These aggressive techniques now produce up to five barrels of wastewater for every barrel of oil. That's wastewater has to be disposed of. In 2025, the Permian saw overpressurization issues, wells leaking, surface geysers of contaminated fluid, even interoperator lawsuits over underground pressure problems. The Texas Railroad Commission issued warnings about underground pressure threatening potable water zones. So not only are these wells depleting faster, they are creating operational and environmental constraints that could slow future drilling even more. Bakken and Eagleford, similar story. Over 50% decline year one, another 30% year two. The technology made wells more productive in year one, but it made the depletion problem worse, not better. If all investments stopped today, global production would fall 8% a year. That's 8 million barrels per day disappearing annually. To put that in perspective, that's more than Saudi Arabia entire output every single year gone. Now, let me show you something even more important. The people who actually run the oil industry are issuing warnings, loud warnings. Amen Nasser, CEO of Saudi Aramco, world's largest oil company, March of 2025, speaking at Sura Week, he said, and I quote, the world is sleepwalking into an oil supply crunch. Years of underinvestment in traditional energy threaten to collide with resilient demand. Think about that. The guy who runs the company with the most oil in the world is warning about a supply crunch. Sahad Rahim, chief economist at Trifigra, one of the world's largest commodity traders, here's what he said. We are potentially moving from a world of commodity cycles to a world of commodity spikes. Because when you have no spare capacity, no investment, and depleting fields, you don't get gradual increases. You get vertical moves, 60 to 150 in months, not years. Jeff Curry, former head of commodities at Goldman Sachs, now chief strategy officer at Carlyle Group, in March of 2025, Curry published something that changes everything. I'll reveal what he said in a moment. But first, you need to understand the mechanism. Now, if you want to learn how to invest directly in oil and gas wells, including 100% tax deductions and monthly income, check in the description or comment section below.
Let's talk about the other side, demand. The bearish case assumes demand collapses, peak oil coming, EVs taking over. Here's what just happened. November 2025, the IEA, same organization predicting peak demand for years, just revised their forecast. Oil demand now grows until 2050. Not peaks in 2030, not declines in 2035, grows until 2050. From 100 million barrels per day to 113 million by 2050. Why? Because the energy transition is way slower than predicted. We don't have the minerals to build renewables at the scale promised. Here's the brutal part. A company decides today to develop a new oil field. How long until it produces? Four to seven years. So decisions made right now determine supply in 2028, 2029, 2030. The projects that should have been approved in 2020 through 2023, they're not happening which means supply that should be coming online in 2026 to 2029, it's not there. By the time everyone realizes there's a shortage, it's too late to fix it. You can't just flip a switch. It takes years. And in the meantime, prices go vertical. Remember I told you about Jeff Curry's March 2025 report? Here it is. Three words. Peak trade. Not peak oil. Peak trade. His prediction? The next era will be defined less by climate and more by energy security. And when security becomes the priority, price becomes secondary. Let me show you exactly how this breaks. Stage one, the narrative. Oil is dead. Peak demand coming. We're in a glut. Stage two, capital flees. Banks stop lending. ESG funds ban fossil fuels. Exploration budgets cut. Stage three, depletion accelerates. Delaware Basin Wells lose 75% in year one. The treadmill speeds up. Stage four, lead time problem. Investment that should happen today won't produce for four to seven years. Stage five, spare capacity disappears. OPEC capacity concentrated in three countries and now with Russian sanctions taking half of Russian exports offline and geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and Taiwan, one more disruption and spare capacity is unavailable. Stage six, reality meets narrative. Eventually, physical market overwhelms narrative. Inventory is critical. Winter demand spikes. Geopolitical event, prices don't rise gradually. They gap up 70 to $100, 100 to 150 fast. Here's what makes reverse bubbles more dangerous than regular bubbles. In a normal bubble, you can shut in supply quickly. Companies go bankrupt. Rigs get, Rigs get stacked. But in a reverse bubble, you can't turn on supply. It takes years. This is why reverse bubbles don't deflate. They explode. Let me count down the five signals that this is happening right now. Number five, U.S. shell production declining for first time since the shell revolution began. Number four, OPEC spare capacity at dangerous lows, concentrated in just three countries. Number three, investment at decade lows while decline rates accelerate to 75% in Delaware Basin. Number two, IEA just revised demand up to 2050, not down. And number one, the one nobody's paying attention to, 90% of all oil investment is spent just replacing what's depleting, not growth not standing still on a speeding treadmill. All five flashing right now. Here's how the timeline looks. Quarter one, 2026, warning signs continue. Prices likely stay under pressure. Supply concerns build quietly. Quarter two through quarter three, 2026, watch for the turn. First signs of physical tightness. First signs of physical tightness. Backwardation in futures markets signals shortage. Quarter four, 2026 through quarter one, 2027, the collision. Supply shortfalls become obvious. Russian sanctions fully bite. Spare capacity exhausted. Any disruption triggers rapid price moves. I'm not saying this is the exact timeline, but based on four to seven year lead times, investment cycles, 75% decline rates, and current geopolitical pressures, this window, historical precedent. 1973 prices quadrupled from 290. 
to $11.65. In 2008, 28 to $147. Extended low prices lead to underinvestment. Underinvestment leads to supply constraints. Supply constraints meet demand recovery. Explosive price increases follow. But here's why this time it could be worse. Shell, which provided flexible supply 2010 through 2023, is now constrained and declining. ESG pressures mean banks won't lend, even at $100 per barrel. Lead times longer, 47 years. Russian sanctions removing millions of barrels from markets. Middle East tensions at multi-year highs. Taiwan energy vulnerability. Exposing Asia's supply chain risk. And the narrative is so universally believed, it's creating the crisis everyone says doesn't exist. When everyone positions for a glut and we get a shortage, that's when prices explode. So let me bring this together. This isn't a prediction. Oil goes to $300 a barrel. Nobody knows the exact price. What I'm telling you is every element of a reverse bubble is present right now. The pessimism, the underinvestment, the capital flight, 75% Delaware based in decline rates, 47 year lead times, demand growing to 2050, geopolitical flashpoints multiplying, narrative dominating reality. And if history is any guide, 1973, 2008, every energy shock. These don't end with modest increases. They end with explosions. The CEO of Saudi Aramco says we are sleepwalking into a supply crunch. The world's largest commodity trader says cycles are turning into spikes. Jeff Curry says we are shifting from peak oil to peak trade, where security, where security trumps everything. A 40-year petroleum geologist says the glut analyst is pure groupthink. The physical market has been deficit for over four years. Investment that should happen today won't produce for four to seven years. Demand just got revised upward to 2050. Ask yourself, what happens when the entire industry stops investing for a decade? Then everyone realizes all at once we need that oil after all. That's a reverse bubble. And we're about to find out what one looks like in the world's most critical commodity market. Now, here's something critical. Videos like this that go against the mainstream narrative get suppressed by the YouTube algorithm. This is why your engagement matters. If you found this valuable, hit the like button, leave a comment, even just a few words. Share this with someone who needs to see it. Subscribe so you don't miss what happens next. Because when reality catches up to the narrative, the people who understand this first will be positioned very differently than the crowd. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk soon.